Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Wise tales from storytellers around the world, which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids and how are you? I'm very happy because I recently went to Spain and I walked high up in the mountains and even though I was a bit scared, I kept on going up. And when we got to the top, there was a really beautiful view over the sea. Hurrah! This is our second of two stories this week. This extra story is to celebrate winning an award for our podcast. It's told by storyteller Seth Townsend and it's from Wales. It's all about a young king who was scared and then learned to be brave. What do you do when you're scared? Some people run away and some people sing a little song and others hide under the blankets. Can you have a think about a time when you were afraid and what you did? Have a little think about that while we have a quick word with the grown-ups. Hola, super great kids, I'm back. I wonder if you remembered a time when you were afraid and what you did. I sometimes run if it's a wasp or a hornet and sometimes I sing to try and forget that I'm afraid. I wonder if I could ask Super Great David to write us a little song to sing when we're afraid. Ask your grown-ups what they're afraid of and if they have anything they do which helps them. Shall we have our story and see what the character in this story did? Let's give a warm welcome to our storyteller, Seth Townsend. Hello, everybody. This is Seth. And today, I've got a story from Wales. And in Wales, if you want to say, how are you? You say, sit with tea. Sit with tea. How are you? Well, as I said before, this story is from Wales. But it's from a time where in Wales there were many different kingdoms, many different countries. It was many places, not just one as it is today. And there was one particular kingdom which was surrounded by a circle of mountains. Everywhere you looked, there were mountains, apart from one little gap in the mountains. And through that little gap, there was a road and it was the only way into the kingdom and the only way out of the kingdom. So when the people came from other countries to visit their friends in this country, they would go through that gap in the mountains. When people wanted to go and visit friends elsewhere, they would go through that gap in the mountains. If you wanted to buy things that came from another country, like bananas, people had to bring them through that gap in the mountains. Well, it so happened that in this kingdom, the king and the queen had died, and they'd left behind a little boy, a 14-year-old boy, who now had to become the king. And he was only 14, and he didn't know how to be a king and he relied on people telling him what he should do. But he always remembered that when his mother and his father couldn't solve a problem, or when they were in difficulty, they would always go to the wise woman who lived on a hill. They were the king and queen, but they'd go to her little, little cottage, and they would sit there and have a cup of tea, and she would tell them what they ought to do. Well, the little king thought, if I really need to find out what to do, I'll go to see her. But before he had a chance to do that, stories were coming that people were having trouble coming through that gap in the mountains. And people came 
to the king and they say, you must do something about it. We came through that gap. We came with our cart. And the ground started to rumble and boulders started to fall from the mountains and we heard this voice screaming at us. Bang! Crash! Wallop! Boom! I am your nightmare! I am your doom! And the boulders started falling from the mountains. They fell on our cart and they broken it. You must do something about it. Well, the king didn't know what to do. He was only fourteen. He asked his ministers, and the minister said, uh, 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 well, uh, 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 maybe you send the army. You should send the army. But before he had chance to send the army, more people came and they said, we've had a terrible time. We came with our horses, and the horses were frightened, and uh, they ran away, and we had to walk all the way here because there was a giant at the entrance to the kingdom. And the ground started to tremble, and the ground started to rumble, and the ground started to move, and boulders and rocks fell down from the mountains, and our horses ran away, and we had to walk here. You've got to do something about it. So he sent the army, and the army went there, and exactly the same thing happened. Exactly the same thing. Bang, crash, wallop, boom. I am your nightmare. I am your doom. And they were so frightened that they ran away. What could the king do? What could the little fourteen-year-old king do? And his advisers said, send the best knights, the knights in armour. You have six wonderful knights, and they can fight anyone. They are the best knights in the kingdom. And so the knights, in their shining armour, on their big war horses, they went to the gap in the mountains, and exactly the same thing happened. Bang! Crash! Wallop! Boom! I am your nightmare! I am your doom! And the ground trembled, and the rocks fell, and the knights fell from their horses, and the horses ran away, and the knights in their heavy silver armour just escaped with their lives to come back to the king and say we couldn't do anything. You will have to do something. And the king, the fourteen-year-old, said, Well, if nobody else can do anything to stop this giant, I will have to do it. And that night he decided he would go and see the old wise woman on the hill. And he went, and as he went in, she said, Hello, my dear, I've been expecting you. You have? You've been expecting me. Yes, I know that there are problems in the kingdom. But first, sit down and have a cup of tea. And already he felt better. He drank his tea, and as he was drinking, she said, We run from things we do not know, and then they seem to grow and grow. And then they get within our way, until their name we learn to say. There you are, you remember that. Well, he didn't understand. Why don't you say it back to me, my dear? Uh, uh, yes, uh, we run from things we do not know. And so they seem to grow and grow, and then they get within our way until their names we learn to say. There you are. Now you remember that, and everything will be all right. Well, he went home. He went to bed. But he didn't sleep a wink, because he didn't understand. And in the morning, when he woke up, well, he didn't wake up really because he hadn't slept, but when he got out of bed, his horse was there, his armour was there, and he was helped onto his horse, and very, very reluctantly he trotted off on his horse to the gap 
in the mountains where the giant was. And as he got closer, the ground started to shake, and boulders started to fall down from the mountains, and he heard, Bag! Crash! Wallop! Boom! I am your nightmare! I am your doom! And the young king's horse bolted, and he was on his bottom on the ground, and he had to stand up because the horse had run away. And he was so frightened, seeing the giant, that he started walking backwards. But as he walked backwards, it seemed that every step that he took, the giant got bigger and bigger and bigger. And every step he took, the giant got so big. And he thought, what did she say? What did I have to remember? What was it? Uh, uh... Can you remember what the wise woman said? She said, We run from things we do not know, and so they seem to grow and grow, and then they get within our way, until their name we learn to say. Well, I don't know this giant's name. Uh, I still don't understand. And he took another step back, and again the giant grew and another step back, and the giant grew. Wait a minute. What if I take a step forwards? And he took a step forwards, and, yes, the giant got a little bit smaller. And another step, smaller, and another step, and every step he took forwards, the giant got smaller, and smaller, and smaller, and now he knew that he just had to keep walking towards the giant and ask him his name, and he did that. Every step he took, the giant got smaller and smaller, until now he'd taken so many steps that the giant was just the same size as a man, and he kept walking towards him, and now the giant was the same size as he was, but he kept going. And the giant got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until the giant was just a tiny little man about the size of a man's hand, six inches tall. Oh, hey, little man, what's your name? My name is Fear. Fear? fear. You mean you're frightened? Yes, that's what fear means. I'm frightened. My name is fear. Don't be frightened, little man. I'm not going to hurt you. I can see you're frightened. But look, I'm now the king. And until last year, I was just a little boy. I'm still a bit of a boy. But you know what? I've got a doll's house that I don't use. I'll bring it to you. You can live in that doll's house. And that's what the king did. The little boy king, he brought his doll's house. And the little giant was so happy living in this little doll's house. But it happened that the little giant started to get a little bigger. And a little bigger, he just became the size of our little boy king. And the boy had his garden shed brought so that the little giant could live in it. And every time he visited him, he was just a little bit bigger until a house was built for him by the gap in the mountains. And he lived like an ordinary person, an ordinary man, and he didn't become a giant again. But what did change was the people coming into the kingdom through the gap in the mountains, would come to the king, and they would say, Oh, what a lovely welcome we have when we come into your kingdom. There's a lovely man there who makes us feel so welcome. And the little king realized that the giant was only a giant because he was afraid, and he became scary because he was so afraid. But now, 
He was just the right size, and everyone liked him. Ah, oh, thank you, Seth, for sharing that story from Wales. I'm glad the king made friends with the giant. Things aren't always as scary as they seem. I wonder, would you have been brave enough to go up close to the giant? Or do you think you might have run away? I wonder if Story Owl is ever afraid. I'm pretty sure she isn't afraid of the dark. Owls love the dark. Now, lots of you have been sending us some very creative story pictures. And here are just a few of my pics. Lovely to receive a picture of the ghost of the bloody finger from Frida, who is six, and lives in Froome in Somerset here in the UK. I like your spider's webs and the man all bundled up in his sleeping bag. Well done. And thanks to Juliana, who is seven and lives in London and has been very busy drawing three pictures to share with us. Thank you, Juliana. I particularly like your picture of the giant's tummy from the story Coyote and the Giant. Your picture is very witty and imaginative. Just great. If you'd like to see some of these super great drawings and some of the drawings for the birthday competition, they're on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. Do send in your pictures for us to share on Facebook with other story lovers. Either attach your picture to our Facebook Messenger or scroll to the bottom of our website at supergreatkidsstories.com That's it for this week. If you're a subscriber, look out for your bonus and super great scary story this week. Keep telling your stories and singing your songs. See you soon. This story was recorded at Wardour Studios in London.